Yeah, obviously a, a tough way to drop one. Uh, 16 for 31 for the line for the game. Uh, should have never got to overtime. I thought we did everything we needed to do to execute offensively to win. We weren't able to finish up, uh, finish off possession. We made free throws. Uh, offensively, that's the best we've looked in some time. 51% from the field. Uh, we had 36 field goals, 24 of them were assisted. That's a, that's a boatload. And the assist kind of came from everywhere. And I thought the guys that, that were out there tonight battled really, really hard. I wish I could have figured out a way to get them a, a W. Questions? Coach, how do you, <clears throat> just all the ridiculous things that happened in the game, how do you process what just happened? Play by play, possession by possession. You know, I let's go back to me. It's turn the finger right at me. When Mike hit that three to send us up one, or to send us up three, I was out of position. I, I was trying to get a timeout with the ref up top, but he sprinted down court too quick. I didn't get him. If I had been on the baseline, I would have been able to get a time out there and at least stop their transition. Now, that being said, a lean in bank three by Cecil Williams wasn't what we were fearing there. Uh, but the kid made his three, and we didn't make our free throws. Coach, what do you tell Mike after this game? Uh, I just, what's your conversation with him going to be like? Well, he had a huge, huge drive on Meyer put us in position to go up one. So I can get on about missing the free throw, but I can also say, you know what, you created yourself, you put yourself in that position, you just got to finish finish it off. But I know what Mike goes through to play. I know that he plays every possession worrying that that shoulder is going to pop out. And you can be disappointed in a result and not mad at the kid. That's easy. That's real easy. All right. I told him that. I, when he missed the first two at the end of the regulation, or the first OT? It's regulation. Regulation. Uh, tried to refocus him right away. And get, get back. You still got game left. You can still make plays that will make that be a footnote in the evening. And I thought he did at times. Uh, How do you weigh the benefits of tonight? Better offensive play. Obviously, you guys. Uh, the point about sharing the basketball stuck a little bit tonight. How do you weigh that against the fact that, that again, you, you didn't close a game out, or, or whether it's free throws or something else, uh, kind of let one squirm off the hook? Well, you have to be a complete jerk not to let some of the good things shine through. I mean, again, we depleted group, guys playing minutes and Positions and uh, again, you could be disappointed in the result, and you could look in the mirror and say we should have done this, that, or the other thing. But you also, at the same time, on the other hand, have to say, okay, we made strides this way, that way, and the other way. There was a game earlier this year that I guess I that you guys lost close. That free throws were a factor as well. Yep. Um, is there any? Uh, thought into me this weighing on the players a little more now that it's now that it's happened again. Obviously, they know they can make their free throws, but yeah, we've had situations where we made some pretty big free throws this year too. So uh, I know this: the more you stand there late in games on the line with things on the line, the more comfortable you become, usually, and. Uh, Hopefully, there's one where we make a whole bunch down the stretch coming up because we missed a whole bunch. Not just down the stretch, we just weren't good for the line at all tonight. How do you uh, go about pick, trying to pick AJ back up after, obviously, he commits the, the well, I pointed step. out to him after the game that he also hit the biggest shot of his career moments before, so uh, he'll learn from it. You, uh, do you worry about him dwelling on it? 
I don't know yet. I, I don't haven't had him on the court going down the stretch yet. We'll see. We'll see. I certainly won't allow him to dwell for long if he is dwelling. It, it, it's a learning curve with him. He's, he's growing. In, and if you're going to grow, you got to put yourself in situations where you can grow. And uh, he was certainly right in the middle of it tonight after sitting for quite a while. Coach, did you see some things offensively tonight that you could kind of key on for practice over the next couple weeks and keep those kind of good themes yes. going forward? Yes, particularly our, our play off the pass. I mean, I, I thought we were doing a good job of driving off closeouts. I thought we did a good job of, I mean, that's the team. We, we doubled our offensive output with a little extra help for 10 minutes the last time we played these guys. So that's growth. Yeah. It's growth. It's, <clears throat> wish we would have grown a half inch more. Uh, you're an emotional guy. Emotionally, though, how this was a game. This was a game most didn't expect you guys to win. You led for the first 39 minutes and 50 seconds or whatever it was, and you end up losing it emotionally. How does that impact a, uh, your only deficit came in overtime? I can promise you this: our guys thought we were going to win. I can promise you that. I promise you they'll believe they can win. They 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 believe they can play with anybody in this league, and I don't I don't think that's. I don't think that's unreasonable given our play against some of the better teams in this league. The point remains, though, emotionally, how does how do you how does this club handle a game where you you were shorthanded, you played over your or maybe not over your heads, but you played winning basketball for so long, and and then again, it's it's not the result you wanted at the end of the day. Well, it's my job to make sure that we get back to it. And I I'll be thinking a lot about that tonight. For me, personally, anytime you lose, whether it's this game or any game, it's difficult that night. And that's why I generally keep my comments with my team a little brief immediately after a game, one way or the other. I, I think emotions have to fade a little bit so you can get down to what is really important and say what needs to be said without, without emotions clouding. But as far as staying up, guys, this is a one-bid league this year. It is. We're going to get into the tournament unless they come up with a new rule. So what are you playing for? Hopefully we're a little more healthy. Hopefully we're – are we where we want to be? Absolutely not by any stretch of the imagination. Can we still move forward? Absolutely yes. And it doesn't – you don't have to squint too hard to see it. How can you relate to uh, TK's plight late in that game where, you know, there's just only so much you can control and you have to watch some of that stuff? Well, I did a lot of watching in college, so I can relate. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. He's a competitor and he wanted to be out there, obviously, and he had been putting up quite a night. Uh, yeah, at the same time, he. Zach got to play some meaningful minutes, 33 minutes tonight, five assists, zero turnovers. Could have shot it a little bit better, but AJ's three, he's got to pass it to him. That's freshman to freshman. Crunch time. February Mac game. Okay. That's it's pretty heady stuff. But did you get explanation from the refs on the on the fifth foul on TK? No. No, he said he had all ball. I had no view on it. It, it. If you're arguing on that call with a play on the exact opposite side of the court with bodies in between you and them, you're just begging. And I'll see it, and then we'll have opinions on it. But I, 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 you guys have a better idea than I do. That's that's sixty feet away and some bodies between me. Coach, real quick, uh, you stick with the seven-man rotation all game. It's really six in overtime because TK's out. Uh, was there any thought to go deeper in the bench at all? Yeah, I had Ellis warming up in the tunnel. Uh, before Doug went down <coughs> with his foul, I told AJ to warm the tunnel. So we had the next, the next man up. But those guys had fought pretty valiantly, and I – 
we had one scholarship player left, Ellis. So I guess the question is, did I think about going with Ellis? And uh, I, yes, I did. Just for like a minute to get some fresh legs out there, you someone break it or something. Yeah, I thought about it. I did. I obviously made the decision I made, but I thought about a lot of things. How does this one stack up with the marathon in uh, South Carolina against Indiana State? Oh, we just got going tonight. We shut it down way too early tonight. We have 10 minutes left in us. Uh, we had more bodies at our disposal against Indiana State. Uh, maybe just one more body, but at least you know one more body could have made a difference tonight. No doubt about it. Coach, you had uh, three guys over 30 minutes, and then another three over over 40. Any change in how you're going to get them ready for Tuesday against Asher? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be. You got to be respectful of that. Come tomorrow, I can't go out there. Will be three hours of suicides. Can't do it that way. It'll have to be a cerebral practice where, you know what, I I, I don't even know what it'll look like tomorrow because I'm my brain's not that far ahead yet. I gotta, but severely modified practice, no doubt about it. What did you think of TK's performance up until the, the fifth round? I thought he was very very good. Would have liked to make a few more free throws. I thought he was very very. With Mike as a, you know, a senior, somebody that you always talk about how much he's worked in this program and battled a lot, what do you expect from him in terms of turning around tomorrow? Uh, or just sort of, you know, oh, I know what Mike will bring tomorrow. He'll come back a little angry, a little edgy, chip on his shoulder, ready to go. You mentioned that he uh, he was worried about his shoulder. Is that, I mean, clearly it's an ongoing thing, but was it worse than it was at BG, or what's the status of his shoulder right now? Well, he knocked it pretty good at BG, so I mean, it pops back in. It's a pain is tolerated thing. I don't think any of us believe that we won't see it happen at least one more time this year. When it's going to happen, who knows? But uh, I see it on tape. I see him. The, the runner he had across the lane where he's kind of falling away and just kind of chucked it and made it. That was a play that before that shoulder, he was turning the corner and getting right to the front of the rim on. So, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. And then he has to come out today and play 46 minutes. That's obviously uh, not ideal. No, not ideal, but it is what it is. And again, I. Complain, but uh, nobody cares. Good. All right. Thanks, Coach. See you guys.